Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Heininger and as the Education Senior Coordinator for LMA International, I welcome you to today's webinar, Marketing Matters, a practical conversation about what young lawyers need to know about marketing and business development. LMA is thrilled to be collaborating with both ABA's Law Practice Division and the Managing Partner Forum on this program which is designed to be a shared learning experience for young lawyers and the marketing and BD teams that they support. To aid discussion back at the office, our presenters have shared some helpful documents located in the resource library widget. If your team isn't able to join us today, we encourage you to share these resources and a recording of today's presentation to facilitate conversation. You will receive a direct link to this recording via email tomorrow or can access through the collaborating organization you belong to. Before we get started, I'd like to thank ON24 for generously providing the hosting platform for LMA's 2017 webinars. Take advantage of this engaging platform by exploring the widgets at the bottom of your toolbar, including the question and answer widget. Our panelists will take questions throughout the presentation as appropriate, as well as the end in a Q&A session. The body of knowledge created by the Legal Marketing Association, or the BOK, is the only foundational resource for the professional development in the legal marketing and business development profession. The BOK clearly defines the accepted domains, competencies, and associated skill sets needed at the essential and advanced levels of the legal marketing profession. Today's presentation falls with the business development and business of law domains. By attending today's presentation, you will learn a handful of today's best practices in law firm marketing, including tips and tricks for developing an individual marketing plan and how best to utilize your firm's marketing team. And with that, I would like to pass over the floor to John Remsen, today's moderator, to kick us off. Please go ahead, John. Well, thank you, Caitlin, and uh, thanks to everybody for joining us this afternoon. This is going to be a fun and helpful conversation, I think a very practical conversation, geared toward young lawyers on how to be more effective, marketing, business development, rainmaking, stuff they don't teach in law school. We've got a great panel, and um, we'll, you'll introduce, we'll introduce them as we get into the meat of our session. Uh, Ashraf, Ashraf, excuse me, Lakani is the president-elect of LMA, and the Director of Business Development at Porter Hedges in Houston, Texas. Frank Ramos is uh, the administrative partner at a Miami firm, small firm, in uh, about 15 lawyers, Clark Silverglate, and I've known Frank for 10 years when he was fresh out of law school, and he brings the perspective of a young lawyer who has embraced marketing and business development is doing a fine job. Tracy Ray. Uh, Tracy brings the perspective of a law firm COO, and she is with Baron Liebman over on the West Coast, Portland, Oregon, and she is the representative of the ABA's Law Practice Division. So Ashraf is representing the LMA and the perspective of the in-house marketer. Frank representing, uh, our, let's say he represents Managing Partner Forum, the perspective of a young lawyer, and Tracy is the ABA's uh, designee to our program, and I'm delighted to be your moderator this afternoon. Uh, here's Ashraf's uh, background, MBA from the University of Texas, worked at Big Law, including Morgan Lewis, Howry, Dewey, Ballantyne, before joining Porter Hedges, 115 lawyers, Houston, Texas. Welcome, Ashraf. I'm in alphabetical order here, folks. Tracy Ray. Tracy is the executive director of Baron Liebman in Portland, Oregon, a 25-lawyer firm, very involved in a number of uh, organizations uh, in the Oregon and Portland area. She is a lawyer, uh, receiving her JD from the University of Oregon, and uh, practiced before she became a firm administrator. So we're glad to have you, Tracy. And finally. Frank Ramos, the administrative partner at Clark Silverglade, 10 lawyer litigation firm based in Miami. Frank spent some time at Big Law, Inshaw Culbertson, very active in DRI, FDCC, several other organizations, and has his law degree from the University of Miami, the U. Um, many of you know me. I'm not a lawyer. I've uh, been involved in LMA for about 20 years. I was in house at a couple of firms. Uh, and have been consulting since 1997, mostly smaller and mid-sized law firms, helping them with a wide array of issues, including marketing and business development. So that's our panel. 
Before we get into our conversation, and it will be a very, very interactive, unrehearsed conversation among, uh, I think, a pretty smart and uh, diverse group of folks, uh, just to throw some data. We, we do a lot of surveys of mid, mid-law, and our most recent survey finds this when it comes to investing in young lawyers, their leadership skills, their business development skills. Uh, 37% of managing partners claim that their law firms provide business development training to associates. 32% say they provide leadership training. Yet 48% don't require individual marketing plans and only 30% track and reward the time. Some interesting benchmarking data that uh, gives us a snapshot how firms are investing in their young lawyers. And here's a couple of things I just wanted to share before we bring it on to the panel. I think first, as a young lawyer, it's important to understand uh, that generally there are finders of business, minders of business. They take good care of it once brought into the firm, and grinders who crank out billable hours. Uh, We're going to focus on finders. And what you should be doing as a young lawyer to get out and bring business to the firm. There are two kinds of lawyers in private practice, lawyers with clients and lawyers who work for lawyers with clients. Where do you want to be when you're 40 years old, 45 years old? Clients hire lawyers. I still believe this, not law firms. And they hire, refer lawyers. They know, like, trust. Know, like, trust takes a heck of a lot more time, effort, and energy to go after new clients than to take care of current clients. Uh, The studies will tell us it takes 8 to 11 impressions to uh, 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 generate a a client from a prospective client. 8 to 11 impressions. That's a courtship. That involves follow-up. That involves relationship. That involves trust. It's important to understand the difference between marketing and business development. We'll talk about that with our panel As a young lawyer, developing habits, habits you enjoy, will sustain and carry you through your career. And the ABA has a model diet for associate attorneys, and it it contemplates 2,300 hours per year all in, 1,900 billable, 400 non-billable. The ABA breaks down those 400 non-billable hours, and a good uh, chunk of it, about 100, uh, two hours a week, uh, according to the ABA, should be focused on marketing and business development. Some things to consider as we begin our conversation. Uh, let me first uh, start off by asking you know, some general questions. And I'm going to turn to you, Tracy, and you have a fascinating background, so why don't you say hello and uh, generally speak to us what you advise young lawyers in terms of marketing, business development, what they should be doing, what they should be um, thinking about. Thanks so much, John. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. So overall, I think that marketing is one of these amazing parts of our practice that you really need to sit down and think about, what do I enjoy doing and how will I parlay what I enjoy into how I will generate business? And at the base of all of it, how will I create relationships? People love to do business with people that they respect and they enjoy being around and that they can trust, and all of that is really relationship building. So when everyone talks about marketing and closing the deal, all of these things are aspects, but from the very beginning of it, to think about and make yourself a plan of how will I create create relationships, who should I be creating relationships with, and then remaining flexible with your plan so that you can alter and, you know, take left turns and right turns and give yourself a lot of credit for getting out there and trying things, but having the wherewithal to realize when things are working and when things aren't and recorrecting and redirecting. So I, you said a couple of things, Tracy, which I think are important. Relationships and do things you enjoy. Give us some concrete examples of the types of things a young lawyer might enjoy that they can parlay into meaningful business development activities. Yes, that's a great place to focus. So we sit down here at Baron Lehman and we talk about what are the things that we genuinely enjoy doing. Do we like to speak publicly? Do we like to write articles? Do we like to attend events and make connections with people and follow up? The things that you enjoy are the things you should start with because it turns out the things that we enjoy doing, we generally excel at a little bit more. When I go to a marketing event or a networking event or a conference, I really love to meet people. So that's something that I uh, focus on doing because it's something that gets me excited. I want to go. And when you want to do something and you're there and you're present and you're excited, that just really 
you know, encompasses your attitude and it really puts your best foot forward. So figuring out, you know, there are thousands of ways to market yourself, but figuring out what types of things you enjoy doing the most and starting there can be really helpful. And the relationship building is really about taking one or two things that you're doing and growing it in a way that makes sense to you and that you can follow up on and create some sort of an ROI chart so that you know the things you're doing are creating some sort of a relationship boost for you. And most of this really relies on follow-up and reaching out to people. If you write an article, what are you going to do with that article? Are you going to send it to people? Are you going to post it to LinkedIn? Are you going to create buzz around the things that you're doing, not just to be super self-serving, but to share with people what's going on? And there's, you know, there's difficulty in that at times because young lawyers don't always love to put themselves out there because it can be scary. But nine times out of ten, if you don't uh, put yourself out there, people may not even know where you're speaking or, you know, who you're writing for. And, I mean, a good example of that is this webinar today. We all come from three amazing organizations, and we all invited our organizations to attend this call. I mean, I have some of my very favorite friends, Andrea Malone with Williams & White today. Her team is on the, on the line. And they're, you know, we promote what we're doing to our to our friends and our family and our colleagues so that they know what's going on, and there's no shame in that game. Excellent practical advice. By the way, we have over 300 law firms on the call today, uh, and as Tracy mentions, it's quite a mix. We have a lot of young lawyers. We have a lot of in-house marketers. We have many managing partners and firm leaders so it's a really interesting mix, and we're going to try to touch on uh, issues that I think uh, might might uh, affect all of, of these constituencies. Um, Ashraf, you're in-house, and I assume talking in a similar vein as to what Tracy's sharing. Uh, anything to add? Uh, wh- how, what's your take on, on what young lawyers should be doing generally? Yeah, no, thanks, John, and welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here and represent the LMA with this great group of speakers. Uh, You know, I think Tracy hit it right on the head. And what we coach our young lawyers is to focus less on, um, you know, there's an instant pressure sometimes people feel to bring business in the door. And at the beginning of your career, it's really about just building your network and finding ways to um, make connections. Um, And I think people often think, well, I don't really know anybody. Uh, but you have circles of influence in your life, and just to get you where you are in your career, um, you know a lot more people than you think. And the ability, the people that we've seen that are successful, you know, starting if it's your high school friends, if it's your college, your law school, um, any community organizations you're involved in, professional trade organizations, family friends, um, you know a lot more people. And not everyone has to be someone who's going to send you a piece of business. Um, we teach people at Porter Hedges to try to have a structured approach to managing their contacts. And what that really means is identify those folks um, that um, will have interest in what you're doing, may need to use your services, and really what we say is stay top of mind with people that matter. Um, And really working that contact list as a young lawyer um, will you know, planting those seeds will prove successful down the road. So avoiding the pressure to, you know, instantly bring business and think that's how I have to, what I need to do immediately to make partner, but really investing in relationships, um, you know, as Tracy was saying, I think is really, if there's one big lesson to take away for young lawyers, that's really where to start. You know, I couldn't agree with you more. I think a lot of young lawyers put way too much pressure on themselves to generate business now. And, you, you know, you're a young lawyer, and I think these seeds you're planting, these relationships you're cultivating, when you're 40, 45, 50 years old, that's when these friendships and relationships are going to pay off for you. And I think many young lawyers have unrealistic expectations that they can go reel in IBM as a client. Uh, but it takes a little gray hair. It takes strong uh, a legal skill set. Um, and, and your friends have to be in a position to hire and refer outside counsel. But it all seems to start to really pay dividends as you hit 40 years old. 
And uh, so don't, 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 don't put too much pressure on yourself. And let's now turn to Frank Ramos. Frank has embraced this stuff and uh, is really, I think, starting to emerge as a nationally recognized leader in some pretty important organizations. So, Frank, why don't you uh, share with us a little bit your general guidelines to young lawyers? Sure, sure. Uh, my recommendation is to pick one or two organizations you want to get involved in, uh, generally a voluntary bar association with a national presence, and start at the bottom and work your way up. Uh, when I start or get involved with any organization, I have a long-term plan on how I'm going to develop uh, relationships and volunteer and engage in activities that are going to result in leadership positions and possibly even the ultimate leadership position. And uh, having served on the board of DRI and having served on the board of other organizations and having been the past president of Florida Defense Lords Association, um, there's a lot of groundwork to be laid, and it takes time, but uh, it affords opportunities to develop relationships with individuals and positions that refer you cases. It uh, provides you a platform for both you and your firm. It also provides uh, some PR uh, in terms of what you're doing. And it tells other people that you're an expert to uh, achieve leadership positions in defense organizations such as DRI or your state and local defense organization or, you know, plaintiffs if you're plaintiff's bar. Uh, that, that really sort of re reflects well on you and it sort of shows others uh, that not only are you a good lawyer, but you're a good leader, you're a good administrator, you're a good manager. Uh, a couple quick tips uh, that I like to share. Uh, one, I, I'm a big believer in meeting uh, folks for coffee. It's uh, something you do early before you start work, uh, before the obligations of the day sort of fall on you and your partners are wondering where you are. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, you know, Starbucks, you know, three dollars a cup of coffee. Uh, you know, you get out of there for seven dollars and take a seat inside, and you can meet for as long as you like. You know, if the meeting isn't going well, you can cut it short. You know, if you're meeting for lunch, you have to wait until the check hits the table. And it's hard to get away from lunch, uh, especially for younger associates, even for for partners of my age. It's kind of hard to uh, leave for two hours in the middle of the day. And another thing I'm a big fan of and I'd recommend uh, for everybody who's listening and watching is to purchase your own stationery uh, with your name on it and uh, with the firm address on the envelope and get in the habit of writing one personal letter a day. You can do it when you get in or you can do it in the evening and uh, do it to your contact. You know, you're not asking for anything. You're not uh, requesting a case or referral. You're just uh, sending a personal note to someone that you met somewhere or uh, you're remembering uh, someone you haven't spoken with in a while, and especially now in the holiday season, uh, instead of spending a lot of money on gifts for just a handful of people, I'd rather you're probably better off investing in some nice stationery and sending out a few letters each day and instead of uh, just signing a, a Christmas card or a holiday card. Uh, I think personal notes go a lot further. I mean, both. Very good practical tips, Frank. And one thing, you know, Maester writes about it, David Maester, uh, in the article we have in the handouts uh, called Cultivating Habits of Friendship. Habits of Friendship. And that's exactly what you're doing through coffee, through note writing, through your organizational involvement. You're developing genuine friendships, and uh, that's terrific. Uh, the organizations. Uh, I'm a big believer in organizational involvement. How do you pick which organization might be worthwhile for you, Frank? Well, um, it kind of depends on what your practice area is. Um, you need to find uh, – we were discussing earlier about what you enjoy and what you're good at. Uh, we tend to gravitate to areas of practice that we enjoy and that we're good at. So, for example, if you enjoy employment law and want to do employment litigation, uh, if you're on the defense side, you'd probably join an organization that does employment law. Uh, and on the plaintiff side, you do the same. And then as a young lawyer, you'd probably volunteer for some of the tasks uh, that people can't find volunteers for, which generally involves writing and editing. It would involve maybe doing case summaries or interviewing other members in your committee or interviewing local judges or editing the, the newsletter that goes out either monthly or quarterly. And those are the sort of tasks that you sort of build on and you get your name out there, you develop recognition. And again, it's sort of a ladder. You start at the bottom and you climb your way up. And with each step, you take on a, a larger task that has a larger profile 
and puts you in touch with more and more people until eventually, uh, over a period of months and years, uh, you become well known in the organization, not only for all the service you provided to the organization, but you become sort of an expert in the area because you've been reading articles and writing articles and speaking or helping speakers uh, address certain topics that you're seen as the go-to person in that area, uh, in the area that you work in, you know, whether it's Miami, Chicago, or New York. So that's try to pick an organization that has sort of a national uh, perspective because it allows you to get referrals from around the country as opposed to from competitors in your backyard and uh, provides you a forum so you can develop a reputation as an expert in your field. Now, you've talked about lawyer organizations, professional associations, all about work. What about church? What about uh, United Way, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, more charitable, community-oriented organizations, Frank? Oh, sure. Um, uh, going beyond sort of the traditional voluntary bar association, uh, maybe in high school or maybe in college or law school you volunteered uh, for Habitat and Humanity or uh, you're involved in your uh, house of worship or your synagogue, uh, either doing some sort of food drive or other uh, types of charitable activities. Um, obviously, those are all made up of people who own businesses, who have legal needs, and they provide another forum uh, from which you can get referrals. It's not sort of the traditional sense of getting a referral from another lawyer, from another firm, uh, but businesses, especially small businesses, have legal needs. They have needs for the corporation. They have employees getting into trouble. Uh, they have lawsuits that are being filed against them or that they want to file for breaches of contract. And these are the sort of people that you get to know one-on-one -on -one, uh, doing these activities. And what's good about these activities is that this is something you do. You enjoy doing. You have fun. Your, your main motivation isn't to get business out of it. You, you would enjoy it even if you didn't get business out of it. Uh, but it does provide a, another forum uh, to meet people uh, who can think of you as their lawyer. And so whether it's you got to go, you got to show up, you got to get involved, you'll get out of it what you put right, into right. it. And I find a lot Absolutely. of young lawyers join lots of stuff uh, too busy to ever show up at much of anything. And that's not right, what we're right. talking they, about. You got to go deep and uh, work your way up through le into leadership. I think. Um, yes, it's better to pick two or three organizations and dig deep than pick ten and not participate in any of them. Certainly, I agree with that. I'm with you. Uh, let's shift gears now and talk a little bit about marketing plans, individual marketing plans. And we'll stick with you, Frank, uh, as a as a young lawyer. Uh, do you have an individual plan? Uh, yes. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know John, uh, John helps law firms and lawyers uh, develop business, helps them develop marketing plans, and he – uh, led our firm through a process, I want to say about 10 years ago or so. We were sort of in the desert, not really figuring out with, among ourselves what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go as a firm, and how we wanted to develop our respective books of business. And he introduced us all to uh, a marketing plan, which I believe is among the materials that have been provided uh, to the viewers. And it's a plan we still use today. It's an individual marketing plan uh, that all of our attorneys, myself and every senior partner and most junior associate uses and relies upon in January. It gets sent out to everybody uh, at, along with a copy of their last year's plan so we all see each other's respective plans. And we go through the plan. You know, We determine what our goals are for the year, how we plan to meet those goals. We put down concrete activities we're going to do. And the great thing about a plan is that it provides some sort of a step-by-step -step, uh, process that we all follow and it keeps each of us accountable to one another. So, uh, again, I believe in the materials there is uh, John Remsen's plan. Yep. I strongly recommend uh, that all of you who are listening uh, pull that up, uh, look at it, study it carefully, and sit down with, uh, and take some time to think it through. You know, this is the perfect time of year. We're in December. Uh, we all do New Year's resolutions. There's no better uh, New Year's resolution for a lawyer than to sit down and have a long-term business development plan. Now, did your did when you were a baby lawyer, Frank? Um, and I can't remember back then. But did the firm require you to have a plan? It or did. More it of a voluntary and drill. No, it was a requirement. Uh, a lot of firms don't require it. Some firms actually dissuade associates because they feel it's going to take away from their billable hours. But uh, at, at our firm, we made a commitment early on to get everybody involved. And we have regular meetings. We have regular monthly meetings where we discuss 
our respective plans with all of our attorneys and the primary attorneys, including myself, the managing partner, another uh, senior attorney, get together weekly and discuss our individual plans. And again, it creates a, an accountability uh, among ourselves to make sure that we're doing what we say we're doing. Without a plan, if you don't have any goals, you're never going to really achieve anything, and that's what a plan uh, brings to the table. How many hours this did, is Caitlin, does your firm ex- Real quick, guys. We had a question ahead, from Caitlin. the audience that says, is a marketing plan the same as a business plan? Oh, I think you could use those words interchangeably myself. Uh, you know, the business plan might talk more about your billable financial contributions as well as your business development contributions. I think a business plan is kind of more overreaching, uh, whereas the marketing business development plan hones in specifically on those activities. Um, but but let me turn now over to uh, Tracy. And oh, you're out in Portland. How, how, what's your firm's attitude toward individual marketing plans, Tracy? And then how do you feel about them personally? Oh, great question. So over here in Portland, Oregon, no, I'm just kidding. Um, You know, it's one of those things. We are a firm that absolutely believes in marketing plans, individual and firm. And I think that it gives us a way to all row in the same direction, have a good idea of where we're going, and then hold ourselves accountable. I meet with each attorney once a month for like five to ten minutes. To just go, it's a one-page plan for each person, and we go through what's working, what isn't, where are we seeing the most ROI, where should we continue to focus, where should we shift gears, and it's just a great time to check in and to make sure that people feel supported, make sure that they are, you know, if they're signing up for things, are they going to them, if they wrote an article, did we push it enough? Um, so just a time to check in to make sure that the that everything is working and that we're making good decisions. Um, it's kind of like a workout plan. I mean, you need to hold yourself accountable, and you need to also have someone perhaps cheering you on in a way and providing support because, let's be honest, billable always comes first, but without marketing and development, there may not be work for those billables. So it really goes hand in hand, and we also love a little internal competition. So a lot of times, um, you know, maybe end of Q2, start of Q3 when – You know, it's nice they're out and people are feeling a little more excited about, you know, just doing uh, non-work related things at points because we all get in that mode. Um, I love to start a good friendly competition. Um, I think leading with carrots is a great way to get people excited and involved. And I'll group people together and we'll do small competitions with, you know, small rewards, $50, $100 gift cards here and there. But it really gets people to team build and to work toward goals together. And it's a fun way for people to continue to push themselves, support others, and like I said, all row in the same direction. And personally, I have my own marketing. I would say personally, I have my own marketing plan too. Um, I do an internal and external marketing plan. As someone who works with every single person inside of our office, I think it's really important for me to focus on um, the success of others. And so that's something that I hold my, myself accountable for to the highest degree. How much time do you expect your young lawyers to uh, dedicate to the marketing and business development plan, Tracy? That's a really good question. You know, we advise to try to spend around 250 hours a year. Um, wow. And that, that, can, that can be lower, that can be higher, but that's a good like rule of thumb for us. We're very active in our community. Going back to when you were talking about organizational involvement, we really try to live by the rule of three, doing something in the legal marketplace, doing something in your personal uh, world, and doing something in the nonprofit world. So we really try to get out there and make a difference. Lawyers have an amazing opportunity to help others and, you know, people really respect this profession. And if we take a little time to impact the world around us, we don't see that so much as marketing. It, it, it becomes marketing a lot of times. I've served on boards I never would have imagined I would have met the people that I did. But just doing something good for the community and good, you know, for your, per- like whether it's like you guys were talking about, your place of worship or your children's school, you know, but just spreading yourself around and meeting new people and providing, you know, providing good work for others that isn't just legal, I think is really important. So all of that counts hours. towards our marketing. 250 hours is a, is a big chunk of time. And um, do you, uh, what if someone doesn't do this? Uh, do you track the time? Does it matter? Is it compensated and rewarded? 
That's a good question. So, I mean, really 250 hours a year. I don't know. That's only 20 hours a month divided by four weeks. That's only five hours a week. If we're talking a coffee, an event, and writing a, you know, writing a, you know, writing something, um, we find that it folds really nicely into our practice. Not only is it rewarded, it's respected. And so at our firm, I think that we attract and retain people who naturally want to grow business and who, you know, take a lot of pride in being part of the success of our firm. It's kind of a personality we have here. People enjoy it. And, you know, the things that people don't love to do, we don't, we don't push that for them. But if everyone is enjoying the marketing aspect of it, the business development aspect of it, the relationship building, it doesn't seem like so much work. We actually find that it becomes something that people really look forward to, to break up their day of litigation and of, you know, hardcore negotiations. It's nice to have something to break up the mix and, you know, you feel like gives you a lot of perspective when you're dealing, you know, if you're on the children, you know, cancer association board, things like that, it gives you a lot of perspective. What you're doing is important at work, but um, there's a lot of a lot of things going on in this world, and to have that perspective and to have that connection with others outside of the office, I think, I think it's really um, helpful to your practice and to your overall, you know, happiness. And so that investment of five hours a week, I think, is something that we find is really healthy for our practice and our profession. Uh, and it sounds like you've really woven this into your culture in a big way, uh, the marketing and business development. Uh, let me turn to you, Ashraf, President-elect of LMA. Um, you're the authority here as the in-house marketer. Uh, what say you about individual plans? Yeah, so I think um, I, maybe we're the outlier in this group, but I think the data you showed us early, John, uh, I think it was 48% of firms yeah. don't require plans, and we're in that right. 48% of Porter Hedges. Um, but I think the reality is those that have plans are generally more successful. Um, but I think plans look different for different attorneys. Um, and I know our focus here is are on the sort of the younger attorneys, those maybe just starting out or sort of thinking about how to build a practice. And I go back to sort of what I started earlier about feeling pressure to generate business immediately. Um, a young attorney's plan doesn't have to be perfect. It's not the sort of set in stone roadmap of how I'm going to make partner and you know make a lot of money in the future. Um, it's really just a place to start focusing on how you want to practice law and what target markets you want to go after, what organizations, as Frank was talking about earlier, um, you know what community organizations, as Tracy was just talking about. It's really a place to start housing your thoughts about what your entire practice is going to look like. And that's really how we, at least at an early stage, approach it. You know, you think about the industries you want to be involved in, your target markets, um, you know, your um, sort of short-term and mid-term goals. But the key, at least the way that we approach it, and the ones that have had the most success realize that it's a living document. And, um, you know, I'd say that it requires – more update than once a year. Um, so we look at ours, those that have them, we look at them four times a year, sort of quarterly, and work with you know individuals on follow-up and adjustments, um, but really impress on the fact that nothing is set in stone and sort of taking the pressure off the process, figure out what you like to do. Do you like to go to events? Do you like to write? Um, you know, Do you like being a member of a bar association? Do you like being a member of a trade association? If that's where you're what a passion is, that's where you get energy, then we build in opportunities. I think Tracy started off talking about this. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, um, you're not going to be successful at it. So yep. it, that's it shows, really, doesn't it? It does. And it's so much easier to write a plan and execute a plan than you actually <laughs> enjoy doing. Um, you know, how many countless meetings have we been in where someone says, you know, I just don't like, I'm not great working a room. Um, but then don't go work a room, you know. Um, let's exactly. not put you in that situation. Let's, you know, get you together with your colleagues at a smaller setting or let's not put you in places where you're uncomfortable. Now, sometimes people need to push themselves a little bit. And you can you know, I, one of them. the analogies, I'm big on using analogies, and I, it's kind of like riding a bike. When you're a kid, the idea of riding a bike is scary. And, uh, but you start with a tricycle, and then you can put training wheels on it. And uh, after a while, bike riding becomes fun, and you enjoy doing it. It becomes part of your lifestyle, but you've got to 
get on the bike. And occasionally you might skin your knee um, or you might, you know, run into the fence post. But the more you're out there doing it, the more natural it becomes and the more fun you have with it. So don't be intimidated. Um, I see a lot of firms get into kind of planning paralysis. We can't get out there and do anything because we don't have a plan yet. Um, almost using that plan as an excuse not to go out and do things. So um, get out there. Start easy um, and uh, take advantage of firm resources, which shifts to our yeah. next topic, which is John, how quick, just, a young we'll take lawyer – I'm sorry? Brent, no, just taking you? that analogy to it a little bit further than what you just said, John. If you don't fall off your bike, if you don't scrape your knee, if you don't forget to unclip your, your shoe every once in a while, then you're going too easy on yourself. Um, I think people need to also push themselves with their plans and mm-hmm. you know, scrape a few knees. Um, but having some structure allows you the opportunity to push yourself and find your limits. And yeah, um, get out of your comfort zone a little bit. That's absolutely. Okay. Keeps you on yeah. your toes, and uh, now now this this leads to our in-house marketing department, and I and I would imagine most firms on the call do have an in-house marketing uh, director or a department of folks that support the lawyers and their marketing and business development activities. And um, Ashraf, let me stick with you, and and uh, why don't you suggest to young lawyers how they can get to know the firm's marketing department, take advantage of those resources. Um, what the role of the marketing department is to support the attorney's activities. Yeah, absolutely. We um, we exist to, like you said, support activities in a whole variety of ways. And um, so as I thought about this, I thought about sort of four specific practical tips that most folks can probably go back and, and do in the next week or so. Um, a very simple one uh, to engage with your marketing department it's just to keep your bio updated. Um, that's a living document, and you know anyone who looks at website stats knows that the primary reason people go to law firm websites is to read profiles. And um, you know if you work at a firm with multiple offices, oftentimes your colleagues within your firm are using your website to read about who you are and what you do. Um, but obviously clients and sort of external sources are also looking at your bio. So step number one, very simple and practical. Um, if those attorneys that are on the call, if you haven't looked at your bio in the last six months, you know, commit to yourself before the end of the year um, as a project just to look at it, update your representative matters, make sure all the organizations you're involved in are on there, and, um, you know, that, that it gets a fresh look before the end of the year. Uh, number two, I would say that firms invest a lot in client events. As a young lawyer, make sure that you take advantage of those. Participate in the events. Um, invite your clients. Uh, follow up with your clients after the event. Really take advantage of the platform that you know the marketing department offers uh, for you to engage in client interaction. Um, three is something a little bit different, but pay attention to how senior partners market the firm um, and ask your marketing department for a recent brochure in your area of practice. Um, Keep your eyes and ears open about sort of how people who've been doing it for longer um, talk about the firm, talk about their practice, communicate with clients. And every marketing department on this call has, you know, plenty of brochures that they crank out on a regular basis. And as a young lawyer, um, you may be interested to see how do we communicate with our clients and potential clients. And then the last specific item I would share about how to work with your marketing department is be your firm's eyes and ears in the market. If there are events, organizations, opportunities um, that you see other firms doing or talking to your clients, you hear that they're engaged in, Bring those back to your firm. Um, a lot of the great ideas that we have start with, you know, I heard someone at this firm is doing something like this. It may not work on the same scale for your firm, but there's a nugget or two in there that would make sense for yours. Um, you know, oftentimes we do a lot of the things that other firms do or other companies do, but we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. And being an active, engaged member of your firm working with the marketing department 
is welcome. And I know a lot of our, you know, our best ideas come from people who bring thoughts and energy back to us because as a department, it's, it's much more enjoyable and productive to be working with engaged lawyers. So that's um, those are my four sort of basic practical types I'm working with. And, and very interested. practical advice. Frank, or, oh, Frank, listen to me. Uh, Ashraf, 115 lawyers. How many in-house folks in your marketing department? We are 2.5. Lean and mean. <laughs> you are. Uh, turning over to you, Tracy. Um, how, how many in your uh, marketing department in Portland? Uh, so we have an amazing marketing coordinator and myself, and I will just, um, a little bit I want to share. I love marketing groups, and I love anyone who's going to invest in me. I want to invest back in them and respect that. And I just think to work with your in-house, to have the opportunity to work with in-house marketing professionals is such a huge advantage on the marketplace. And so just communicating with them, uh, taking on things that they ask you to do, uh, following through. I mean, if someone is willing to coach and train and support your practice, they're literally investing in your success. And it is so amazing to have a group that is working towards, you know, helping you build a practice. So I would say thank them often, take them up on opportunities when you can. And if you can't, respectfully decline and explain why you can't do something, but get back to them, be prompt, and just be engaged. Um, I love in-house marketing people. <laughs> They're like my best friends. So, um, and it's my favorite part of my job here at the firm. I mean, as an executive director at a C, you know, a C-level role, you know, there's a lot of other things I get to do, um, like from finances and all of that fun stuff. But the marketing part is really the most exciting. And so, I would just say, if you have someone who's willing and able to help you, take them up on it. Um, and one other thing I wanted to note on, um, we were talking about bios a few minutes ago. One of the things I would say is just set calendars for yourself. You don't have to do it every week, but set a calendar reminder to update bio, add a representative matter. Did I speak this week at something? The more you can just slightly change your bio and keep it updated and fresh, you know, it helps with the SEO. It helps with people, you know, if a partner or someone from outside of your firm is looking at your bio, you want it to be shining. I mean, that is your Think about when you were looking for a job, your, me, your resume was like gold, and now you have this amazing you know, firm that's hosting your resume on its website. You really want to shine. So I would just, I really love that, that piece of advice to make sure that your bio is updated. But I would just say, make reminders for yourself on your calendar all the time. And if you can get to it, great. But doing things um, in small tasks um, is a lot easier, I find, than overhauling my bio at the end of the year. It's just like entering time. There's no way I'm going to remember everything at the end of the month that I did. But if I keep it up, if I input my time each day, um, if I if I update my bio when I can, uh, it's just uh, it's just really helpful in the long term. You know, I think you know the in-house marketing department is your friend. They want to help you help yourself, and I think when they ask you to update your contacts in the database to maintain your bio, to let us know when you're out speaking, writing, so we might gin a press release. Let, work with your marketing department. They're there to help you look good, build your reputation, build your relationships, take full advantage of your in-house marketing department. They want to help. Frank, let's come to your firm. Uh, small, what, 10, 12 lawyers, Miami, no in-house marketing department. Where did you go no. for resources? Uh, well, we went to webinars like this. We took time to read what was out there. We attended conferences that had presentations on attorney marketing and business development. We hired you to, to provide us a retreat, which I believe was on a Saturday a number of years ago, where you sit down with us and you provided us some forms and some ideas to think about, and we hashed out through a firm-wide marketing plan as well as our individual plans. For, for smaller firms who don't have the resources to pay for either a department or even an individual to sort of head up their marketing efforts, um, it's probably best to have some attorneys sort of take the lead in that regard, whether it's an administrator or managing partner or even an associate, and uh, get everybody together and help everyone stay focused and read the materials and attend uh, the conferences or meetings uh, that discuss these sort of issues. Uh, on an individual level, you know, I know attorneys who hire uh, life coaches or marketing coaches uh, for, you know, a, a set fee. They'll sit down 
and train uh, the young attorney or even a more senior attorney on how to come up with a long-term plan and stick with it. Uh, one of our attorneys here uh, did that and was very successful with that. Uh, so there are different ways of doing it, uh, even if your firm doesn't have those resources. Um, attorney marketing is a very important issue. Business development is a very important issue, and it's something that's often discussed and written about and presented on in many different forms. So uh, whether it's uh, going to John Remsen's website where he has a lot of materials uh, or other websites or other places, there's a lot out there. And so marketing. if your firm isn't providing you what you need, uh, take the time and see what's out there and, and invest your own time, and even if you have to, your own money, uh, to uh, develop a plan and, and pursue it wholeheartedly. We're, uh, we're at about 15 minutes. Uh, uh, one more point on, on the events, uh, what I see a lot among young lawyers. If your firm is putting on events or you're attending events, what you do before and after the event are probably more important than the event itself. So think about what you can do in advance to learn who's going to be there, reach out to some folks in advance, you know, suggest we get together and, and maybe get to, uh, if we're going to a conference in New York, let's get together for breakfast. But, but familiarize yourself with who's there, who you want to meet, spend some time with, uh, and maybe reach out to some of those folks at the event. Mix, mingle. There's a tendency for associates to cluster among themselves uh, at the firm event, and they don't mix, mingle, get out, shake some hands, meet clients. Uh, so break away from your, your fellow associates at the event. Uh, mix and mingle with some folks. Tag along a partner who's got relationships with folks you want to meet. And then after the event, the follow-up. We've talked about 8 to 11 impressions, friendships, Follow up with the lunch, with the handwritten note, with the coffee. Uh, invest in those relationships. Invest in those friendships. So the event itself is one touch point, uh, 8 to 11 impressions to convert the prospect to a client. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes left, so I'm going to ask, uh, 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 talk a little bit about social media here. And Tracy, uh, I'll ask you to lead us off in terms of what guidance you might offer young lawyers uh, in that crazy online community uh, and, and the various social media platforms out there. All right. So I think that one of the best things we can all do for ourselves is outline and start small. Because if we start small and do something really well, it's better than casting a huge wide net and doing things just so-so. So I would just, you know, if you have a marketing team or if you have someone you can reach out to or you have other lawyers that you're seeing really, you know, do a great job, reach out to them and see what they suggest or what they do. But I would always say one of the safest places to start is LinkedIn. I like three things about LinkedIn a lot. One, it's super user friendly. Two, it, uh, you get uh, this wonderful place to collect all of these connections that you can easily go to all the time. And three, like I was talking about at the beginning, it's a great way to spread news about things that you're doing or that uh, your colleagues are doing, and it doesn't feel like you're doing it in a way that is uncomfortable. So for me, I think LinkedIn is a great place to start. Um, something, I mean, it was one of those things after our first planning call for this group, uh, immediately I think all of us LinkedIn together. Um, it's just one of those professional things that feels like you're taking that next step to connect with people, and then you can stay in touch with them really easily, and you can kind of follow what they're doing. So I would suggest LinkedIn, but that isn't to say I wouldn't suggest or promote many of the other social media platforms, but I think that if you are starting out and you don't have a big online presence at this point, that would be a good place to start. I would also go back to your firm's own website and making sure that your bio looks phenomenal um, and up to date. The worst is when someone goes to um, someone's bio on a website and it's like three sentences and doesn't have publications, presentations, representative matters, um, and groups that you're involved with. So I would just suggest LinkedIn and your own profile at first on your, um, on your own website. And by all means, have a photograph, a professional photograph in which you look like a young lawyer, not someone off to you know, the golf John, course. <laughs> um, that is a good point. Um, and also with LinkedIn, you know, use the, use. I would say use a consistent, good photo across the board. Um, and yeah, investing in a nice professional photo is just one of those things um, that is really important to do. 
even if the firm's not paying for your picture, go get yourself a picture and put it out because like people a good size you up real fast for. on what they see, and they might not even read about you if they don't if you don't have a picture, or if you have a sloppy picture. Uh, that picture is really really important. Uh, Ashraf, anything uh, you might advise as to social media? Sure. So I think um, one of the challenges with social media is staying current. You know, I, I personally, I find it overwhelming to just stay on top of it. Um, but one of the things that we advise, you know, our lawyers here at Porter Hedges is that if you're not on your own, at least when it comes to generating content, um, our firm puts out a good num- you know, a good bit of content. Um, individual lawyers here, you know, send out alerts. Practices send out alerts. Uh, we have, we generate a good amount of content as a firm, and those that are on social media, whether it's LinkedIn or however else you choose to to reach the marketplace, um, there are ways to generate content that isn't solely on you. Um, and I think that's that's helpful. That really that relieves the burden of um, you know sort of staying fresh. Um, and then you know, as Tracy just mentioned, I think LinkedIn is probably the preferred professional way to um, to communicate with the marketplace, um, you know, some firms make um, you know decisions about Facebook and things like that. But the key really is if you're going to do it, to stay active, and um, and you could really you know set out a niche for yourself, even if it's if it's the firm content, if it's you know posting news articles that are relevant to your practice. Um, you know, those of us that are on LinkedIn, you really have an impression of somebody based on the feed that you see. Um, so it's just incumbent if you're going to be engaged, make sure that you keep fresh content up and use you know, use all the resources at your disposal, including including um your firm in helping to be a good firm steward and push out that content as well. Frank, what's your uh strategy vis a vis social media? Sure. Um I see it as sort of the two prong strategy. One, I like to connect to new individuals on LinkedIn and share uh, content. Uh, I post every day some sort of tips for young lawyers or for more senior lawyers. And uh, if anybody wants to follow me, you're welcome to. I have uh, a number of books that are free there, including one I wrote with John on Attorney Marketing 101. Uh, So those are all available. But once I do that, once I make a connection and develop an online relationship for those who are local, I then generally reach out for coffee. Uh, someone who has sort of a practice area that's complementary to my own and who works nearby and is happy to meet me at a local uh, Starbucks, uh, you know, early in the morning for, you know, 20 minutes and just talk about our respective practices. At the end of the day, uh, social media is a great way to meet people, uh, but you still need to meet people face-to-face and talk to them on the phone and, and have a more personal relationship with them. So I see social media as sort of an entree into that uh, to meet new people and then, uh, develop that relationship, whether you meet them locally or if it's somebody who's in another state, maybe when you attend a conference, you maybe will meet uh, during a break between the conference. What's link, I think what's neat about social media that we didn't have 20, 25 years ago when I was in-house is you're going to go meet with somebody, you know, go, go learn about them their hobbies, their avocations, where they went to school, the organizations they belong to, and build your friendships around those talking points. You know, hey, we both love college football. Uh, We both uh, are avid golfers. Uh, And that gives you something around which you can build your friendship. Uh, So go research, folks. Uh, Take a look at LinkedIn. Um, we're going we're gonna to do parting shots real quick. We're almost out of time, and Caitlin's asked me to hold about two, three minutes at the end for some audience questions. Uh, so I'm just going to go down the list. Parting shot, practical tip, one thing. Ashraf, what takeaway would you give to a young lawyer listening that we haven't already talked about? Yeah, so I would say that, you know, we think about marketing business development externally from our firm. Um, so my practical tip for lo- young lawyers is don't forget the value of your internal marketing. Um, everyone doesn't know what you do, and it's incumbent upon you to, again, stay top of mind with people that matter, but that includes within your firm. You know, whether you're a 10-lawyer firm in one office or a you know 300-lawyer firm across 10 offices, um, create a list of contacts within your firm who, you know, they may be within your practice, they may be in areas that you want to learn more about, but make sure you find opportunities to market yourself, your practice, 
and your interest internally as well. Often that's great. You know what? That, that's that grounds us because uh, that's where you should start: is get to know your firm, its partners. Uh, let them see you as that go-getter who goes above and beyond. Um, in a way, your partners are your clients uh, as a young lawyer, and you know the partners who have the work you want. You go befriend them, grab a matter, and kick it out of the park, and you'll get another matter and another matter. Uh, so, so th- think about the partners as your clients, as a young lawyer. Frank, what what would be your parting shot? Sure. Um, at your firm, find another darn lawyer uh, and partner up and be each other's accountability partner and meet once a week. Uh, it could be just at the office, either in the morning or the evening, and compare notes and see what each of you have done to move your marketing plan forward. Uh, knowing that someone is there that you have to answer to and look in the eye and explain to him or her that you have or haven't done something and try to explain away your lack of activity or try to show that you've actually done do, have done something. That's that's important. Um, and we talked about accountability uh, to a large degree uh, this afternoon, but I think that's having somebody uh, at your age level and your experience level uh, holding each other accountable will help you uh, go a long way. It's kind of like having a uh, fitness partner when you work out. Excellent. Tracy, what would you uh, offer the young lawyers before we um, move toward our close? Absolutely. So I would say focus on yourself for a minute and figure out what success means to you. Define what success is long-term for you and then study people that you believe are successful in the way that you want to be successful so that you can look at their journey and, you know, take some of the things that they've done and make them your own. I would also set goals hold yourself accountable, and reward yourself. I think rewards are really important, um, and I think that they work really well when you reward yourself. Um, engage and respect and trust those that support you and say thank you often to anyone who takes the time to invest in you as you invest in your legal practice. Excellent. I, I say just do it like Nike. Just stop reading about it. Uh, stop thinking about it, but get out and start doing it. And uh, do stuff you enjoy, stuff you're going to sustain. Uh, our psychologist, Larry Richard, if you haven't read some of his works, he's fantastic. His blog is called What Makes Lawyers Tick. And he talks about, for so many lawyers, there's an absolute fear of going out and, and marketing and business development. And it's rooted in fear of rejection. But you get out, you do it, you do stuff that plays to your strengths, things you're going to enjoy. Don't put pressure on yourself. Just go do it and have fun with it. Uh, Our psychologist friend Larry Richard will tell us if we have a goal, great, great. Put it in the context of New Year's resolutions. If we put it in writing, we up our chances of implementing that goal. If we share it with others, we've further upped our success rates in achieving our goals, which plays into everything we've said. Accountability, uh, getting a marketing buddy who's going to hold you accountable. So a plan, um, focus, structure, accountability, get out there and do it whether your firm requires it or not. Uh, Here's some resources. Uh, Frank's book, Attorney Marketing 101. Uh, Follow Frank. He writes great stuff for young lawyers, practical stuff, keeps marketing on the front front burner. Uh, The LMA website, another treasure trove of of resources. The American Bar Association, its law practice division, uh, has material about marketing, business development. Um, Our website, the Remsen Group, Frank mentioned, we have a collection of articles on a variety of topics relating to marketing, business development. And then we've got a section at our Managing Partner Forum website as well that speaks to marketing and business development, more toward the managing partner and the firm perspective, uh, but there's some some stuff there as well. Caitlin, you had some questions before uh, we call it a day. Absolutely. So we'll take a few questions here. If your question does not get answered or you'd like some personal uh, follow-up after the event, you're welcome to contact me at education at legalmarketing.org, and I'm happy to in- put you in touch with the uh, party that would best answer your question. But in the meantime, Tracy, at one point you had mentioned a rule of three. Could you repeat that uh, idea? 
Oh, sure. That's a good question. I just think that anything in life should be done in some sort of a bite-sized portion. And I just think the rule of three gives you a little flexibility. So I always try to have goals, um, like three-month goals, you know, six-month goals, year goals. Um, I try to have three different goals. I try to have three different ways of doing things. Um, and I made the joke earlier, I think it's it's just part of my life. The rule of three has always been there. We have three kids, you know, I have three this, three that. Three is just a good number, I think, to have a little bit of flexibility, but not too many goals, not too few goals. The rule of three is really helpful. And that way you can, um, you know, you can always have one that we, ha- we always have, like, the client that we're close to signing, the client we want to sign, and the aspirational client. So just, you know, the rule of three can be really helpful and still keep it bite-sized, but it's attainable. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for questions today. Again, if you had a question that didn't get answered that you'd still like follow-up on, you can reach us at education at legalmarketing.org, and I'll put you in touch. Otherwise, I'd like to give a warm thank you to our presenters today, including the ABA Law Practice Division and the Managing Partner Forum, and, of course, all of you in the audience. We hope this program ignites productive dialogue back at your firms. And don't forget to download the resources in the Resource Widget Library uh, to help those conversations. As a reminder, you will receive a direct link to this recording via email tomorrow. You can also access this through the collaborating organization which you belong to. Please take a few minutes to complete the online evaluation that will pop up as you leave today's program. This information will help us all plan future programs. We thank you for your feedback in advance. And with that, I wish you all a good rest of your day. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.